Prayer is an opening of our hearts to our Father. It's a raising of our minds and our souls to the Creator of the universe. We join with the Son, with Jesus, to see His Kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. There's an often repeated saying, much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. Jesus tethers his most audacious promises to it. Can we too learn to have a deep communion with our Father, witnessing a radical reviving work in our lives, our churches, and our world? Welcome to session two in our church-wide series, Much Prayer, Much Power. How God moves in power when ordinary people pray. Well, prayer is one of the most amazing gifts, isn't it? Uh, That we can access the power of God, the, the Creator, God Almighty, and that He would move through prayer into our daily lives and our circumstances in the world today. But can I tell you a few of my own stories about prayer? Um, I've fallen asleep when I have been praying. Um, And there's been times when I might not have fallen asleep, but I'll be praying, and then before too long I've realised I'm not praying any longer. My thoughts have been distracted. I'm far from prayer. I've been at times inspired by prayer. I know that it's so powerful. I've wanted to put disciplines in my life, set alarm clocks, but found that I've fallen short. Jesus said, Uh, the the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I can understand that. Actually, ironically, uh, Jesus said these words as he had asked his disciples to pray and they had fallen asleep. I don't know if you can relate to some of these challenges in your own life. I often pray the prayer, God, I can't do this. I, I can't pray. Could you help me to pray? And if you feel like you're in that situation, can I just say today, that is the best place for us to be. One of humility, one in needing God and being dependent. Because as we are in this position, that's when the Holy Spirit comes and helps us in our prayers. And that's what we want to look at today. Last week, Nathan looked at how um, Jesus has made, us, made a way for us to access our Heavenly Father. And today I want to look at the role of the Holy Spirit in helping us in our prayers. One of my favourite chapters in the Bible is Romans 8, which speaks of the role of the Spirit in the believer. But in that chapter particularly, I want to look at a few verses today that speak of the role of the Holy Spirit helping us in our prayer life. The first verse I want to read is Romans 8, verse 14 and verse 15. It says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. One of the great gifts of salvation is that we become a child of God, where we enter into an intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. Many would say this is the pinnacle of the gifts of salvation. We quite rightly speak about the way Jesus has come and given forgiveness of sins, reconciled us to God, or even given eternal life. These are great gifts, but really they are foundational to the greater gift of becoming a child of God a functional gift, a relational gift that we can work out of and live out of day to day here on earth, right here, right now. And that is into that intimate relationship as a child of God. And prayer is based out of that relationship. And here Paul says, the Holy Spirit within us leads us to cry, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit in the deepest, most parts of us affirms that we're a child of God and cries out within us to our Heavenly Father. And Paul could have written there, we cry out, Father. But he said, Abba, Father. And the word Abba is an Aramaic word that that gives this picture of a child crying out to its father. And this is how what Paul is emphasising in this verse, that we are crying out from the deepest, most parts within us, to our Father. It, it's actually a cry of intimacy. It's a cry where the, the child knows that they are loved, 
It's a, a cry where the child knows that the father hears them and the father will respond. There's a confidence in that cry. And this is the cry that we can come to God with. From the deepest parts of our heart, we come confidently and securely in the knowledge that he loves us, he cares for us, and that he hears our cries and responds to our cries. This is the relationship that we pray from. But there are challenges, as I mentioned before. What do we do when we find we're distracted in our weakness? What can we do? Uh, What do we do when we don't know what to pray? And this is where, as we humbly come before God, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Let me read verse 26 and 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. There we see the Spirit helping us cry out to God in our weakness. And Paul, who wrote half of the New Testament, in humility says, I don't know what to pray, but the Spirit helps me in my prayers. Uh, The word paraclete is often used to describe the Holy Spirit. Para means it comes alongside. And the Holy Spirit comes alongside us as we pray to help us in our weakness, but also to translate the groans, the words that we use in our prayers before God in the throne of grace. He takes our prayers as our advocate and presents them to our Heavenly Father and translates and perfects our prayers. Uh, We see that even further defined uh, as Paul goes on in verse 27, and he says, And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So there we see that the Holy Spirit translates and perfects our prayers in line with the Spirit of God. There's this story of a young five-year-old girl praying beside her bed. Her dad comes in and hears her praying, and she's praying a prayer something like this. Dear God, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Amen. Intrigued, the father asked the daughter, what are you praying? And she said, I'm praying to God, but I don't really have the words, but I gave him all the letters and he can take it from there. In a, in a similar sense, I know that's a simplified illustration, but this is what God does with the prayers that we pray, with the groans of our heart, our heart's desire. He takes them translates them, perfects them, and takes them before the throne of grace and aligns them with the will of God. In this sense, there is no failed prayer. Actually, we only fail when we fail to pray. Robert McChain said, God gives you everything you ask for in prayer, and if he doesn't, he'll give you something much better. This is the confidence that we can have as we pray. One that, as the Holy Spirit leads us to cry out in that intimate relationship with God, that we will be heard and also that the Holy Spirit will perfect our prayers as they're taken before the throne of grace. I trust God will continue to lead you and teach you as you discuss some of these truths in your small groups. And I did want to encourage you to consider coming along to our practical prayer seminar on Thursday night, the 29th, where we'll bring some of this theology, some of the things we're learning down in our practical day today. So come along and join us on that night.